to the beat. It's exactly 25 minutes after four. Well, Radio Mirai is listened to by a very, very big number of people within South Sudan and beyond South Sudan. And radio in South Sudan has become so effective that people have trusted it because it reaches most parts of the country. When the crisis broke out in December last year, people were on the radio 24-7. As long as the radio was broadcasting and was giving information to people and everybody was able to access the radio, people knew that everything was in control and life was still to go on. So in South Sudan, radio has become so, so instrumental in peace building. It has been used for disseminating information regarding health, security, reconstruction, development, reconciliation, education, governance, everything that you can think of. Radio Mirai has designed all those kind of programs. Music can touch lives. Music can change people. Music can communicate. Music can unite. Musicians have come up doing a lot of collaborations. Different tribes coming together, doing songs for the interests of this country to tell the politicians, to tell everybody in South Sudan that people, the only way we can move forward is by being together. Brothers in the studio, Caesar Man, Cool B, Silver X, I hope you will bring peace in South Sudan soon through your music. In radio, you have to be very careful with what you say because the sooner you say it, that is it. You can never retrieve your word back. When it goes on air, it's gone. So you say the best things on radio that you think can help, can support, can improve someone's life. My name is Moro Isaac Lokombu and I'm from South Sudan. في حلقة جديدة من برنامج كوبري بريج ودراما وموضوع جديد وحكم معكم في الحلقة دي أنا لوسي إدوارد جبارو. As a journalist, it's really tough to work as a journalist in South Sudan, and then to be a woman, it's another challenge. It's good to have a platform where you can stand and think and say what you think is good, and then for other women to see, okay, Lucy is there and she's doing it and. And, and they say you are a strong person because you're working uh, uh, as a journalist. And then it gives you also another role, you know, to empower other women to come out and speak out and because they're, they're half of the community and they're the one actually raising the kids, they're the one taking care of the family. What's happening here in South Sudan, I feel sad. I'm really sad and depressed. When the independence happened, I moved back to South Sudan so I can build my country. But now we are going back, we're stuck somewhere in the middle. People are displaced. A lot of people are staying inside UN camps. Why? This is our country. We're supposed to go and build, not to destroy. When you talk to, you introduce yourself to a, to a person, then they will ask you, who are you? Then they say, what's your tribe? If I'm proud of my tribe, yeah, it's okay to be proud of your tribe and to pass on whatsoever uh, cultures you have. But it doesn't mean that my tribe is better than yours. We're supposed to be one, but right now we are not one. I lost hope, to tell you the truth. I lost hope. I decided long time ago not to, uh, to go outside the country. But the way I'm seeing now, it's not going anywhere. And... Um, if the leaders, the politicians, they don't have uh, that desire to, um, to solve their, um, their problems, and now it's affecting all over the country. We are tired of war. We are tired of our people killing each other every day. We are tired of, we had that war with the Northerns, and we say that they're bad or they're what, and we're doing it among ourselves now. Let us be one nation like what we are saying. My name is Lucy Edward Jubara. I'm South Sudanese. Oh 
the 15th of December, war is started at night. War broke out at night, and then on the 16th, in the morning, uh, we were still at home. Fighting is taking over all, all over the, the, the town. And then at 2, actually, we came to the POC side, the protection of civilians. I have one wife with five children and my brother who has been killed. And then we, I brought his, his children, his wife. I was with them for one full month. So I, I was not feeling good at all. It was for me, for my family, for me and my family to stay here at, at such a situation. And then I, I decided for them to go to Kenya, to Kakuma, refugees camp. Yeah, my family are now refugees, so they are staying in the camp. I'm working, sacrificing to help my people and the POC. So that made me remain at the side, so I'm missing my, my, my children. I'm living outside the field sea. This is my tent where I live. As a camouflage, number one is to communicate information. Number two is to facilitate humanitarian assistance. Number three is to manage the dead bodies. Then we take care of the dead bodies. Number four, we are receiving a lot of new arrivals from the other different states. I love my family and my children and I, I need them to go up, to grow up, to be people. They can do whatever I, I have not done, like they can go further. But we need reconciliation, we need people to live in peace, we need people to come back as a one nation, and, yeah, one tribe. My name is Chan Chan, I'm from South Sudan. South Sudan an enormous potential for global contribution. I've missed home. I haven't yet been home. So you can say I'm homesick. And even that is an underestimation because how I feel cannot be put into proper perspective when I know I'm not welcomed home. I haven't yet met grandma, but I understand she stands in the middle of chaos. She is not a refugee, and it makes me wonder how come we've been on the run for so long, and while we've given hopes to come back and return, how come home still shuts the door in our face? How come it's still the tears that makes this ground moist? Sometimes I hope that it just becomes a fantasy, that this is all a dream, that this is all a nightmare, because it would make sense to run after mum and grab at the tip of her skirt. And while she tells me the tales of what South Sudan really meant, what South Sudan was really about, I hope I can find a day when I can walk back home and realize that this here is the place that all my imperfections come to make sense. That this here is the place where we wouldn't have to point guns at each other. That this here is the place where hugs and kisses would actually be the only things that are given. They say home is where the heart is. I wonder where I left mine. I wonder if it's still there, intact. Because some days I despair. I'm a part of the world and yet I feel I'm out of place. There are too many broken hearts. There are too many lost souls. And I'm pretty sure by calculation right now, we've lost too many. Make this place feel like home again. Because we want to come home. My name is Abraham Anyang Medid Nyuk, and I am from South Sudan. <laughs>